Hello there, Bernadette Doyle here. You are so welcome to this special training, how to get three clients in the next 30 days. Yes, that's what we're gonna be focusing on for the next 30 minutes or so. I'm gonna show you exactly where you need to focus to get three clients in the next 30 days, at least three clients in the next 30 days. And what you're gonna love about this training is you're gonna see it's not so much about what you do, it's more about who you are being. So I've been helping people like you to get more clients and grow their business for over 25 years now. And what I've done in this training is I really want to focus on the things that really make a difference when you want to generate clients quickly. So I've got five things to share with you. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing you need to do if you want to bring in more clients is you have to sell from sufficiency. So what do I mean by selling from sufficiency? What I mean is that when you are out, when you're marketing yourself, you're doing it from a place that, knowing that you are more than enough. So as you are right now today, if you have the desire to serve paying clients, you also have the ability. You don't need to go and collect another certificate. You don't need to go and do another course, sign up for another program. As you are right now, you have everything you need to show up and serve. So if you've been telling yourself that there's something else that you need to do, before you can go and enroll a client. Notice that that is a story you're telling yourself. It's you and you're the one who's putting things between you and your next paying client. There is already someone out there right now who is willing and able to hire you. They want what you've got. And um, if you are telling yourself there's something else you need to figure out first, you're just not gonna put yourself in the place where you can connect with that person. So that's the first thing I mean when I say selling from sufficiency. But the other thing I mean when I say selling for, from sufficiency is to know that you have enough. So sometimes what can happen when we need clients is that neediness can be like a repellent that actually keeps client away. So think about it like, you know, if you've ever met someone who, you know, it's getting close to Saturday night and they're really desperate for a date, that, that neediness can feel a little creepy and it can leak out sometimes. Even if you are hoping that you're kind of acting really cool, <laughs> um, that neediness can be an energy that is counterproductive in our marketing. So I want to share with you um, a story and experience I had where, that, where I really learned about this. Um, your clients are not there to meet your financial needs. They're not there for you to meet your emotional needs. That's on you. And if you're looking for clients to do those things, then it is actually going to become a barrier that gets in the way. So when I first learned about this, it was when I had started my very first training business. And honestly, the first 18 months were bumpy. Like it took me a while to really lock in how to get clients consistently. And so there was a period, it was coming up to Christmas, where um, I hadn't been bringing any money into my business. And I was like, oh my goodness, I don't actually even have money to buy presents for my family. So even though I'd been struggling a bit financially, it wasn't until I got to the point of like, I can't buy Christmas presents for my family, I need to do something. So I um, decided that I would go and take a job in a call center and my thinking that time was, well, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm aiming to work with call tech center clients. So not only will this bring in some money, but this is going to be a great place for me to get experience and be in the environment where I'm looking to sell. Anyway, on the very first day that I was going to work in this call center, I was all dressed. I was ready to go out the door, about to go in, into my car. My telephone rang. And at the end of the telephone was someone who literally this happened. When I say it, it sounds like it's a kind of crazy story, but this is actually what happened. The person at the end of the telephone um, was a potential client that I'd spoke to about a month earlier. And literally what they said to me is, Bernadette, our trainers let us down. We have a room full of people who need training today. And how soon can you get here? <laughs> I was stood there and I was like, oh, okay. So a day's training versus going to the call center. And what I was gonna earn from the day's training was more than 10 times what I would have earned in the call center. And I was like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, I'll be there. So I rang the call center and said, I won't be in today after all. And I went off and I and I did my day's training. And, and that was the first piece of work I did for that client. And I ended up working with them for several years after that. Now, even at that moment that this happened, I, some, I knew that somehow the getting that call, getting that out of the blue call from that client was connected to um, me making a decision and saying, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure my financial needs are met. I'm gonna go and, and get some work. 
And I think it was because I actually took that step and I took that action where I was making myself responsible for my finances and I wasn't putting out that on my clients or my p potential clients that basically I, I got out of my own way and I was able then to receive the business that was there but that I hadn't been able to get because I'd been so consumed with need. Another place that you can get needy around clients isn't always financial. Sometimes it can be needy for the approval. You're looking for the validation from the clients that, you know, that what you offer is good or, or worth the money or worthwhile. And so you, you really want to make sure that you're, you're cleaning up all of your thinking and all of your energy so that you're selling from a place of sufficiency. So I am enough and all of my needs are met, is very different uh, energy to, um, you know, I, I need a client. So just pay attention right now. It's like, where is your energy on that spectrum? And you want to you want to be bringing yourself constantly to that place of, I am more than enough, and all, all of my needs are met. Okay, so a, and a good mantra that will help you with this, and I really recommend that you look at this several times a day, is to remind yourself, I'm more than enough, and I'm ready to serve. I'm more than enough. I'm ready to serve. Right now, you are more than enough and you are ready to serve. There is a client already out there who is willing and able to pay for what you offer. And it's just if you're so stuck in your story that you need something else or you need to do something or something else that needs to happen before you can show up and serve those clients, that's what's getting in the way. Okay. The second thing, and it's kind of connected to the first thing, is that the first sale you, need, you make is to yourself. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you're going out in the world and you want people to invest in you or more specifically to invest in themselves through you to say yes to what you have to offer, you can't be shy about this. You can't. Those are conversations that you can't show up to if your head is full of doubt. Like if you're not certain about the value you offer, why should anybody else uh, should else be? And this is so crucial. It's like this, this is your job daily to make sure that you are valuing yourself and you are valuing what you have to offer to other clients. Like they can't do it without it starting from you. Now, another story. I do love my stories. Um, but this was um, a, a great learning point for me when years ago, it was when Amazon started their marketplace and you could sell books. I was clearing out my office. And um, during this clear out, I came you know, across a few books and I thought, you know, they've, they've, they've done their time with me and I'm going to sell them. So I listed them on, on Amazon and I put them on the corner of my desk and um, they sat there for two weeks. And every day that I came into my office and I got to my desk, I saw the books there. And one day I caught myself that I was actually saying to myself, oh, those are those unwanted books. And when I realized that that was my thought, I was thinking that the books were unwanted. What was actually happening in my experience? I was labeling them as unwanted. And sure enough, the world was agreeing. The books weren't moving at all. And um, what I did was, I, I re when I realized what I was doing, I was like, okay, let me see if I can turn this around. So I literally sat and I took each book in turn. I held it. And I just looked at the book and I thought about the what it had meant to me, how it had helped me. And I just was full of appreciation for each book. I did each book in turn. And literally, I wished the book well and set the intention that it would now meet up or match up with the next person in the world that the book could serve. And so this was a thing. It took me maybe 10, 15 minutes to do. Within 48 hours, all of those books had sold, all five of them. And they'd sat there for two weeks, not budging. Now, you could say, oh, well, that's coincidence. I don't think it was coincidence. What changed in that instance was my appreciation of the book changed. I, my thinking literally went from those are unwanted, almost like a curse I was putting on the books. And sure enough, the world was agreeing with me to when I actually poured my appreciation and my intention that the books would match up with the people in the world that needed them, that shifted. And at the what I realized from this story is that like, this works for people too. So are you, uh, are you looking at yourself with appreciation? Are you considering yourself to be unwanted, unloved, nobody appreciates me? Is that the story you're telling? Because you're probably fine that the world is going to agree with you. The world will agree with the story you tell. Or are you looking at yourself with appreciation and knowing that you're more than enough 
and you know setting the intention that you're going to match up with the person who's already out there who needs what you have to offer like what if you were to try this for the next 30 days like just setting that intention daily i promise you not only will you get at least three clients you'll probably have a lot more but more importantly you'll have developed a habit that is going to serve you um indefinitely in your business career where you where you realize the power of your thoughts to attract what you want so if you don't see as yourself as desirable, why should anyone else? And if you have the thought of, oh, I'm not good enough, um, no, or, 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 or this is a recurring thing that comes up for you, I want you to recognize that is simply a story that you've been telling. The reason it feels real or it feels true isn't because it's true. It's just a thought that you've practiced a lot. It's a habit. It's like an old song that you keep old, on singing. But you're the one singing the song and you're the one who can literally change the tune. So what if instead of putting all of the energy that you've put into, oh, I'm not enough story, you were to actually start to redirect that energy into the recognition that I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough and I'm ready to serve. You've got everything you need right now to make a difference to another human on this planet and get paid from it for it. So you don't have to carry on um, telling that old story. And if you find yourself falling back into the I'm not good enough story, don't judge yourself for that. Just recognize that it's it's habitual. It's a, it's a story you've practiced an, a lot, but it doesn't make it true. And it is not the truth about you. You are more than enough. You have what it takes to serve right now. And the instant you recognize that and start communicating that, not just verbally, but just in your energy, how you carry yourself, and how you treat yourself, the world will pay pay attention to. So what's it going to be? Are you going to carry on arguing for the not good enough story or are you going to embrace a new truth, the truth about who you really are, that you're more than enough and you're ready to serve? Because every single day, every moment of every day, you have a choice. You're either putting your energy behind the I'm not enough story or you're putting your energy behind the more than enough story. So start to notice that. And if you find yourself going back into the not good enough story, you can simply do a course correct. Now, the third thing I want to say to you is that your clients are already out there. Right now, while you're here with me watching this video, um, there are, money is changing hands. <laughs> Business is being done. Um, money is flying through the ether, through ele electronic exchanges. Cash is changing hands. So if that money hasn't been coming your way, it's not because there's anything wrong with you. It's like you just haven't been putting yourself in the way of that business that's already going on in the world. So notice, this is like it's not like you're creating something new. It's like you're basically just connecting with a business that's already happening out there. So people are paying today for solutions that you can provide. And if that hasn't been, if you have that business hasn't been coming your way, it's probably because you just haven't been getting out there enough and having conversations with the people who could hire you and letting them know what you have to offer and how you can make a difference. So again, it's really important to pay attention to your self-talk here. So what is it? What's your dominant thought when you think about marketing yourself or connecting with your next paying client? Are you telling yourself or the people around you stories like, well, I just can't find the clients. The, uh, the clients aren't, aren't out there. It's so hard to find it. People won't pay. People won't pay the ch prices that I want to charge. I want you to recognize those are all stories. And if you're going to argue with me that, no, th those are the facts, those that, you know, the, f the facts of what's happening, I'm actually going to counter that those things are becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy for you. Those are, th th those are statements you're making about your situation. And sure enough, the moment we put that filter on, what we get is, is, what, is what our perceptions will allow. So if you want to shift, if you want to have a new reality, then you're going to need to shift your perception. You're going to need to at least stay open to the fact that clients are out there. So even if you're not convinced on that yet, what would happen if for the next 30 days, instead of saying to yourself, oh, it's really hard to find clients or no matter what I do, I can't seem to get people to sign up. What if you were just to say, OK, I'm open to the idea that the clients are out there, even if I haven't seen them yet, if not, I haven't connected with them yet, I'm open to that those people are out there. Though, And so um, make sure that you're focusing on the opportunities that the business that's already going out there and start to ask yourself, how can I connect 
with a business that's already happening. The bottom line is you are probably already connected to your next paying client. So, you know, there are 7.8 billion people on the planet. <laughs> you know, you're only look if you're only looking for three over the next 30 days, then then that's where you need to put your attention. Now, to help me with this, I have this little um what we call this a target board. Um, it's a, like an archery game, but, uh, but it makes the point. So in the center of the circle here, let's say those are paying clients. So if you want to get more paying clients, um, you want to focus, I call this the buying zone. So this is the point where people pay you money. You want to focus on the people that are closest to your buying zone. So around here are the people who already know, like, and trust you. They might not have hired you yet, but there's a degree of connection, recognition. And so even if these people aren't your next paying client, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you should go out and, and try to make them your paying clients. That's going back to what I said in the first point about selling from self-sufficiency. It's not about trying to sell to your friends. That's not what I'm proposing at all. But know that your next paying client is probably already in this zone. And so you what you want to ask yourself is like, what are the things that you could do to have connections with the people who already know, like, and trust you. So it could be that you just st simply start reaching out to people that you may have done business with in the past, or people that you know could recommend people to you, uh, that, you're, that you're asking them to help you connect with your next paying client. So the big mistake is to try and come all the way out here. Like, these are strangers who have no idea that you exist. And it's going to be quite, it's going to be a lot more effort to get someone from here into here. If you want to get paying clients in the next 30 days, you absolutely must focus just on this zone. So, so you don't need to go and create a whole sales funnel out here. You don't need to go and do crazy stuff like that. You need to focus on who do I already know? You could actually reach out to people you already know and talk to them and find out about what other problems that they currently have that you could help them with. So again, I'm going to give you another story from my own experience um, of how this worked for me. So when I started my very first uh, business and I was looking for clients to for my sales training, um, I, I started my attention, put my attention out here. So I was literally doing cold calling and calling up companies and booking appointments to go in and meet with people. And because I had some cold calling experience, I was able to do that. But when I got into those companies and started having conversations, I realized that their lead times were like going to be months. So it wasn't to say there weren't opportunities there, but it was going to take a lot longer than I had to um, to get business in those places. And that's when I started focusing on the people who were closer to me. And how, just through having conversations with those people, they were saying things to me like, oh, yeah, I understand that you, you know, you've got expertise around cold calling. Well, I need some help with that. Could you help me with that? One of my first business clients was actually um, a friend of my boyfriend. And when they heard that I was doing things in, 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 I was starting this new sales training company, they said, well, actually, we need some help specifically with cold calling. Could you come and do something with us for that? So my first paying client was someone that I was already connected to, but and I didn't find them straight away because I was out here trying to get people interested here. And that takes a lot more time and a lot more effort. So if, if the point is about getting paying clients in the next 30 days, you really want to focus your energy and attention on these people in here, rather than going out and doing those activities that, you know, long term might might pay off, but they're not where your energy needs to be focused right now. So the next thing that you need to do is you make, need to make sure you're keeping it really, really simple. And that basically ties in with what I've just said, that, you know, you're, you're already connected to your next paying client. So you don't need to go and set up a challenge or, launch, you know, create an online launch or um, go and set up a sales funnel. All of those things are great to have in your business. I have them in my business, but they're not where you need to focus if your focus is on three clients in the next 30 days. There are things that you can do in the here you now, here and now. My motto is do what you can with what you got where you are. 
And I'm going to put forward to you that you are already connected to your next three paying clients. You're either directly connected because they're already on your contact list or your friends and Facebook, or you're indirectly connected because you're already part of the same group on Facebook, or you're connected through a friend or a friend of a friend, but there is a connection that already exists. So focus your attention there rather than trying to build something from scratch, something that's completely um, uh, new. And so you want to keep it super, super simple. And, you know, here's the simplest way is to talk to people, is to have conversations, is to initiate conversations, which is about learning about what they need. You want to ask them about their goals and challenges. And then once you identify what their goals and challenges are, if that matches up with something you offer, you can make them an offer. And when I say make them an offer, it basically it means that, you, that you're saying, okay, this is, you told me this is what you need. This is what I've got. This is what it will do for you. This is what, is what it costs. Are you in? That's making an offer. Putting a post up in a Facebook group or on your profile on Facebook and saying, I've got this. If you're interested, PM me. That is not making an offer. That That's that's marketing. But if that is if that's fueled by oh, I need a client. Can you see how that's never going to work? So you want to keep your focus on having conversations and exploring needs with people, not from a place of like, oh, please like me, please hire me. But like, well, let's just see if there's a match. Let's just see if there's a fit between what I offer and what you need. And if there is, great. We can talk about how it can work together. And if there isn't, then that's fine. We'll move on. Do you see it's a different energy, but it's the it's the energy that you want to adopt if you're really serious about getting clients in the next 30 days. Okay, so let's do a recap on what we've covered so far. So first of all, you want to sell from sufficiency. So that means recognizing that you're more than enough, you have everything you need right now to work with clients and get paid and make a difference. And it's also recognizing that all of your needs are already met. So if you're watching this video with me, even if you've been, t if you've been suffering from a lack attack, and telling yourself, oh, the not enough story, the bottom line is this, you've got a device to watch this on, you've got um, you've got internet connection, that means you've also got power, you've got all of those things, you know what, if you've got loose change in your pocket, you're in the top 6% of the world's wealthiest people, so you, you have enough, all of your, right now, in this moment, all of your needs are actually met, whatever the story is that you're telling yourself, so that's what it means to sell from sufficiency, Next, the first sale you make is to yourself. So notice what you are saying to yourself about the product you are offering, your program or your service. Like, are you are you celebrating internally the value and are you appreciating everything you're bringing to the party? Or have you fallen into old habits of like, I'm not good enough, they're better than me, because that is sinking that you are going to need to clean up if you're serious about being magnetically attracted to the people out there who are already paying for services that you can provide. The business is already out there, but you are not going to be able to connect with that business if you're telling yourself, you know, throwing a pity party for one. You need to actually start to recognize the value that you bring, and you do bring value. The next thing that you need to do is know that your clients are already out there and I've proposed that you keep it super simple. So I'm not doing anything complicated in how you reach out and connect um, with those people. I mean, actually, if you if you want some advice on, you know, how do you initiate a conversation? I just literally reach out to people and say, oh, hey, it's been a while since we connected. I'd love to catch up. How are things with you? And I'm not doing that in a predatory way. Like it's... Often a person pops into my mind and I'll send them a message. And it's like, it really is because it's like, oh, hey, how are things with them? Or just, just want to check in with them. And if business comes from that, great. And if, if it doesn't, well, there's connection. Like, so it's not about being predatory or trying to turn every interaction with a, another human into business. If, if, you're, if you're doing it in that way, that is when that kind of needy, icky energy um, comes, comes across. So keep it super simple. And then the final, the fifth thing is you want to make this a priority. Look, if you have not over the last 30 days brought in as many clients as you want, I'm going to argue that it's because you have not made this a priority. You've not been focused on the income generating things, client generating activities, or if you have been doing them, 
it, you've been doing it, but it's been fueled, but with an energy of lack, which is the opposite of sufficiency. It's been fueled with the energy of not enough, of proving, of needing to get clients. And so what you want to now do is make this a priority over the next 30 days. And so that means every day you want to either have conversations. So you want to have conversations which leads to making offers. And if you're not actually having the conversations, you should be doing things to set up the conversations in the shortest possible way. And so going back to this, this means that you've got to focus on the people. You know, if this is your paying clients, this is your buying zone. You're going to focus on the people that are here, not going out here and trying to get strangers interested in what you have to offer. Now, I recognize that actually so many people tell me that they would find it easier to go and talk to people here than to talk to people that they already know. OK, and what that means is, again, there's a story that you have in, in your brain about why you, you believe that it's easier to sell to people here than it is to sell to these people. Take it from me. I've been doing this for 25 years. That's not true. That it's always much easier to sell to people who are already connected to you because there's so um, much less skepticism um, and, uh, yeah, skepticism, really, to, uh, to, over, uh, to, to overcome. So you want to make sure that you're focused in here and make this a priority. So what would happen? Would you take me up on this challenge? What would happen if for the next 30 days you literally took on board everything I've just shared with you in this video and, and, and you said, okay, today I'm prioritizing getting clients and I'm going to do this from a place of sufficiency, knowing that I'm a more than enough and I've already got everything I need to show up and serve. And um, I'm doing this. I'm not looking for my clients to meet my emotional, financial needs. I'm, I'm doing this out of a desire to serve. And if necessary, I'll go and meet my financial needs elsewhere by getting, you know, a, a, a part time job or some other way of generating income. But I'm still going to make myself available and I'm going to show up and I'm going to connect. I'm going to make this a priority. I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to get out there and connect. And when you do those things, and it's not just what you do, it's who you are as you do them, I'm telling you right now, your success is inevitable. You take this on, everything I've shared with you here, and really put it into practice, and I promise you that you will get clients in the next 30 days, much sooner, actually. Now, if you like what I, uh, I've said here, and you want support as you implement this plan, then I'd love you to um, explore my program, which is called Get Clients, Make Money. Now, notice this invitation is, is not because you need it. I've already, I'm adamant about this. You do not need anything to get clients. You are already more than enough. It really is an option if this is something that you want support, you want to accelerate it, or you recognize that you need um, support, like just keeping that mindset on track then please reach out to me and I'd love to have a chat with you about how get, get, get Clients Make Money can help you reach your financial goals this year, can help you reach and connect with the people out there who really want your help, who want what you have to offer and you can actually make a difference to those people and be handsomely rewarded for, from it. Either way, my intention for you is that you know that you're more than enough and that you quickly connect with your next paying client. Not to put money into your pocket, that is a nice bonus, but because of the difference that you can make to them. So if you are interested in exploring Get Clients Make Money, reach out, uh, you can private message me or leave a comment below. Either way, I'll see you very soon and I look forward to hearing about your success getting clients over the next 30 days. With all my love,